So welcome everybody and a very warm, really warm welcome to our invited speaker, Paul Spence, who needs no introduction because he is a highly esteemed scholar. Uh, he's very well known in the field and he is affiliated to the Department of Digital Humanities at King's College London. He has an academic background in Spanish and Spanish American studies. As you already know, probably, <laughs> he has uh, led and managed digital humanities uh, research on a number of major interdisciplinary projects. He has played several senior roles in international digital humanities organizations and he is also particularly active in the Spanish language digital humanities, which has taken a leading role in promoting internationally. Um, he has carried out research in many fields uh, within the, the domain of digital humanities and uh, particularly relevant for us and for the um, uh, theme for the topic of this uh, uh, conference is the field of digital humanities. It is pedagogy. Paul's current research seeks to explore how digital knowledge practices are changing the way that we record, disseminate and share information when we study human culture and how these practices are inflected by linguistic and cultural factors. So the title of the, his presentation today reflects his research experience very well. And the title is uh, are the digital humanities language insensitive, connecting data debates about modern languages, global cultural representation in the age, and the international classroom? So please, grazie, you have the floor. Grazie per l'introduzione, e grazie per l'invito. È veramente un piacere stare qui in Italia, stare nel mio primo evento in the IDEI UCD, anche se sono stato molte volte in Italia con, uh, con, in, al, in altri eventi e ho conosciuto bene uh, il campo così forte di informatica umanistica, umanistica qui. Um, vo vorrei anche dire grazie a una collega, una, com una compagna di, di lavoro che fa ricerca con me sulla tematica di oggi, lingue moderne e digitale che si chiama Renata Brandau, che ha fatto abbastanza, abbastanza lavoro con me in, questo, in questo, questa tematica. Come dice allora nell'astratto di, di questa presentazione, c'è um, molta attenzione negli ultimi anni sulla rappresentazione culturale globale in uh, digital humanities, um, ma la questione che mi interessa è la seguente. Sono i digital humanities così sensibili come dovrebbero essere sulla differenza linguistica, sulla pratica multilingue e come si manifestano nella pratica di ricerca e di insegnamento del campo. E per rispondere a questa domanda voglio fare una connessione fra la, la ricerca sulla diversità uh, linguistica e culturale in, in digital humanities, con i debatti su, sul ruolo e futuro delle lingue moderne. Ma prima voglio fare domande a, 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 a voi, tre domande. Se, se potete alz, alzare la, man, la mano per piacere. La prima è quanta gente lavora sul, sul, sul campo di, di lingue, lingue moderne qui? Più o meno, sì? Grazie. Quanta gente lavora su um, lingua, lingue moderne straniere? Voglio dire esclu, esclu, escludendo um, la propria lingua. Grazie. E quanta gente lavora qui in un centro di dipartimento dove si insegna o fa ricerca su um, lingue moderne straniere? Grazie. Ho fatto queste domande anche in, un, in una presentazione similare qualche settimana fa in Inghilterra e non è sorpresa che c'era era, era, era meno mani che si alzavano. Allora, io passo adesso a inglese, Scus mi, sc mi scusate, c'è una, una ironia di, di parlare di, di questa, questa tematica in inglese qui in Italia, ma non avevo tempo di tradurre, eh, tra tradurre e come vedete il mio italiano è molto spagnolizzato e non voglio uh, fare male al alla lingua italiana più tempo, scusate. So, 
I start my talk today by describing two challenges, one which affects modern languages and the other affects which, which affecting digital humanities, which I believe are connected. The first is a context where modern languages have been under pressure in the UK and in other countries for a number of years now, with a long series of reports cataloguing these challenges at all levels of education and typically using words like crisis and urgency. And this is typical of the situation of modern languages in many other countries. The MLA report of 2007, for example, in North America, talked of a critical moment in reconfiguring modern, language, modern languages courses to produce educated speakers who have deep translingual and transcultural competence. In 2009, a leading higher education institution published the highly influential Wharton report, named after Michael Wharton, the chief author, which addressed challenges for, uh, challenges for modern languages in England in higher education. And this report advocated greater agency from the modern languages as a field in confidently and creatively defining its own future, clearer articulation of the importance of modern languages at university level from within the field itself, and greater interaction with other stakeholders, other people involved in modern languages, including those working beyond educational contexts, and more joined up thinking towards an integrated vision of modern languages. So the author, Michael Wharton, proposed that people working in modern languages, notwithstanding, in spite of their very different language traditions and needs, would provide the field, should provide the field with a compelling identity, implicitly allowing it to engage more fully in a complex and fast-shifting political and economic environment. Second context. In recent years, the digital humanities has seen an extraordinary expansion as a concept, which while ill-defined and diffuse, has entered mainstream debates about the future of the humanities and indeed of scholarship more broadly on a truly international scale. Fabio talked a little bit about this earlier on. And this growth has also coincided with the intense debate on the terms of representation of the field of digital humanities and of its community and professional practices, which as a field has always had international pr pretensions, but has not always matched those with, the, uh, with uh, attention to diversity and inclusiv inclusivity in practice. So initiatives such as Global Outlook DH, Digital Humanities Quarterly Journal Special Issues in Spanish and French recently, and more recently, even programming historian efforts to develop digital humanities tutorials in Spanish and French have sought, for example, here to address the immense Anglophone linguistic and cultural bias which digital, digital culture has amplified and which dig, digital humanities has often, un, unintentionally sometimes, reinforced with its, within its own areas of influence. And these efforts have done much to change, have done much to change the men mentality, the mindset of digital humanities in terms of global diversity, as witnessed by the recent conference, uh, bilingual conference in Mexico, DH 2018, the first in the global south. And the focus has rightly often been on giving voice to both to underrepresented, underrepresented scholarly communities and marginalized research subjects, but there has been relatively little connection made to the role of modern foreign languages. Um, and today I argue that that's an, an important element that we need to add to this debate. So, returning for a moment to modern languages, the perceived crisis in modern languages had le has led to a number of initiatives. And obviously the UK, I'm speaking here very much from a UK perspective and <laughs> with Brexit and so on, you can imagine the kind of in interesting discussions we have at the moment. Um, but in the UK, the, 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 there's been a number of initiatives, including the AHRC-led Open World Research in Initiative, which aims to help the modern languages find a common voice and to raise its profile through new models and new partnerships. And there are four projects funded by this initiative, which between them are, one, exploring the interconnection between linguistic diversity and creativity, two, developing new relationships between language and community, three, fostering multilingualism in language policy, and four, foregrounding the role of modern languages in the concept of world making. I work on the Language Acts and World Making Project together with my colleague uh, Renata, Brandau, Renata Brandau, and together we are using our digital mediations strand to explore interactions between modern languages and digital culture in, broad direction, in both directions, using 
firstly a series of panoramic surveys, landscape surveys. We've done a, a questionnaire, interview survey, literature review, resource review, curricular studies, and also experimental practical engagements in digital model languages, which I will be uh, announcing more news on very shortly on, on Twitter in the next week or so. And what we found in our, in our landscaping research is that the engagement of modern foreign languages with digital is both wider and deeper than many people realize. This has historically been poorly understood within modern foreign languages as a field as a whole, and has often been invisible to the, the digital humanities, at least as modern language research specifically, although it increasingly surfaces through initiatives such as the recent panel on digital hispanisms at the UK Hispanist Association last year, and the roundtable on digital hispanisms at the MLA conference in Chicago earlier this month. A recent survey we carried out showed into digital attitudes, digital attitudes in modern foreign languages showed significant excitement from the 158 respondents about the potential of digital research. Digital mediation is particularly strong in modern foreign languages around language learning and teaching. That's where a lot of the, the, most, the, 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 the innovation has happened, uh, where researchers and teachers in that area have, had an have an elevated understanding of the potential for authentic, multimodal, learner-centered, transcultural, and poly polylingual interaction. But it's also increasingly influencing modern language research, even outside traditional fields, uh, related fields uh, such as corpus linguistics or translation studies, which obviously have traditionally high levels of digital engagement. So aside from general observations in the, in the survey that we received about advantages and disadvantages of digital access, collaboration, dissemination, things we all know, this survey also showed evidence of new attitudes toward research scale, uh, research at scale maybe, or data as a research material within the field of modern languages. And in also increasingly transnational and translinguistic approaches to, to research, which is obviously very important for modern languages, um, including the ability to expand research beyond nation-centric and monolingual themes and with partners outside of the global north. The Transnationalizing Modern Languages report, published in September 2018, called for a reframing, a restructuring of modern languages to meet global challenges which go beyond seeing modern languages simply in terms of language learning, the more instrumental view that, that some governments prefer, and rather as a key element of cultural literacy. One final observation here. Up to now, digital humanities engagement with modern languages has tended to concentrate in certain areas, such as digital edition, medieval studies, digital art, electronic literature. And I could add a few more, but, but, there, but there are certain areas. Other areas are under-researched. And I feel there's a surprising lack of engagement between digital humanities views on pedagogy and language learning pedagogies, which, as I say, are quite advanced. This presentation is not fundamentally about the effects of digital on mon modern languages, however, but rather on the effects of modern languages on digital, and specifically the digital humanities. The title of this talk, of this talk asked if digital humanities is language insensitive. And it may seem strange to ask, especially in Italy, if digital humanities, a field which has strong roots in literature, li literary and linguistic computing, computational linguistics, and digital philology, is la language insensitive. But I'm referring not so much to, not, well, not, only, not just to digital humanities as an awareness of language in the sense of language as a formally analyzable system for communication, but also of language as a marker for global and cultural diversity and linguistic diversity. We, we recently see terms like language insensitivity or language indifference used by people like Charles Forsdick to describe what he calls the unmarked monolingual assumptions of numerous academic disciplines and non-academic sectors. And it's been well established by people like Domenico Firmonte, Isabel Galina, Amaran Daco, that digital humanities suffers from these unmarked assumptions as much as most other fields. And in spite of efforts by initiatives such as Global Outlook DH, which I mentioned already with its translation toolkit, its DH Whisperer initiative, 
there is a lot to improve. I think we can all agree in digital humanities is an internal practice. But this talk is also not about that. I'm not examining today language indifference as a design fault in digital humanities scholarly communication or professional practices today, but rather language awareness as an actual crucial research and pedagogical challenge and opportunity in the field. And I would argue that the field of modern languages, which also goes under the name of modern foreign languages among, any other, among many other labels, has a crucial part to play. So, how do modern foreign languages challenge or, or, or pre pre present new opportunities for DH? Language-based research has been a central part of DH, as, 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 as you know, as I've already said, since its inception. But in spite of the significant proportion of the modern language projects that we analysed, for example, in the DH Commons database a few months ago, we found 84 out of 794 projects mentioned modern languages in some way. The relationship generally is under-articulated in comparison to other cognate disciplines such as English or history, and we're very accustomed to, to, to hearing about digital humanities in the English department, Matt Kirschenbaum, or more recently digital history uh, being articulated as an important force, and digital classics, I could mention many others. We don't hear much about digital modern languages, and I argue that that's, a, that's a, 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 missed, a missed opportunity. And there have been little, in the, also little in the way of systematic studies or analyses of interactions between modern foreign languages research and DH. But in the UK in the recent, recent years, surprisingly, there has been a few debates. Interestingly, there have been a few debates about the relationship between the two. So we had, for example, in November 2015, a writing sprint on the theme of modern languages and the digital. So this is where... A group of people, including me um, and various other people involved in modern languages, had to, write, had to answer some questions over the course of a few days, and we, we produced a, a collaborative edited article, um, which was later published as an open access collaborative uh, collaboration by Liverpool University Press's Modern Language Open. Conversation, conversations in this article ranged from themes such as data in modern languages and research process to user interfaces in modern languages and digital ethnography. Claire Taylor and Neve Thornton, who edited this article, set the scene for greater possible collaboration between modern languages and digital humanities and argued that modern languages are particularly well placed to tackle the user-oriented end of DH and are well versed in the kind of interdisciplinary interactions which DH is, is well accustomed to. Following on from that, in an article for Digital Humanities Quarterly, Thea Pittman and Claire Taylor continued the theme, arguing that um, modern language provide, pro um, bridges a gap between traditional DH praxis and linguistically and culturally specific cultural studies approaches to digi digital materials. And they went on to argue that more collaboration is needed to optimize the potential of both disciplines through what they called a critical DMH, D, DHML, Digital Humanities Modern Language Approach. This approach, they argue, will help us to understand better how digital technologies are inflected differently in distinct, distinct cultural contexts and enable us to make better connections to non-Anglophone digital cultural production. So I'd like to outline some, some examples of how I think DH is, is benefiting from a greater MFL's sensibility. As I say, these debates around linguistic and cultural diversity about the field's own communication practices have rightly received a lot of uh, attention in terms of strategic matter of policy, but the research agenda has often been driven as of the, the, the direction of, of flow in the collaboration between digital humanities and modern languages has mostly been about how the digital humanities disrupt modern, so how the digital humanities disrupts modern languages and not the other way around. And I believe that uh, it's important to change the direction of the flow and to look for challenges which are mutually transformative. One obvious area where DH could make a difference is in studying linguistic diversity. An article by Nick Theberger in Digital uh, Scho uh, Scholarship in the Humanities Journal in 2017, for example, argues that making information about the world's small languages more freely available should be a digital humanities project. Digital humanities are already active in some great projects in this area to protect endangered minority or heritage languages. So, for example, just in Mexico alone, there are numerous projects trying to conserve the richness of pre-Hispanic languages, such as Nahuatl and Maya. 
but we need greater awareness of and commitment to linguistic diversity in the construction of digital resources, for example, and this is an area where modern languages can make an important contribution uh, to. This includes attention, for example, to linguistic and cultural interfaces. Taking an example um, of this in practice, we can see the work of Nicario Jimenez, whose work incorporated key Andean, uh, Andean concepts uh, in, the work, in, the, in the words of Underberg and Zorn, who could both collaborated with him and wrote a book called Digital Ethnography about uh, covering the experience, uh, they talk about the complementary duality and the tripartite division of time and space transferred into web design. And this website is about the past. The t if you look on the right, the past, uh, which is the top part of the, of the uh, picture, the present, which is the middle, and the uh, bottom, which is the future, future of retablos, a kind of portable altar, important in Andean culture. While the implementation of this resource is rather dated now, do you remember Flash, everyone? Conceptually, still, this example is very interesting and effectively unbundles the hidden assumptions in design features for nominally global digital resources. And it reminds us that different audiences interpret digital interfaces in different ways. Meanwhile, the work of Thea Pittman and others draws attention to the ways in which indigenous communities have started to reappropriate the language and practices of digital culture, recasting their use of new media technologies as, as net weaving, net weaving, uh, um, implying networking, um, in, implying the, the networking activity, or as bows and arrows um, to hunt for information and to defend their culture. And in her book, new book, digital, uh, New Digital Worlds, uh, which advocates post-colonial perspectives to digital humanities, Rupika Rissam mentions the work of HCI 4D, Humanities Human Computer Interaction for Development, a scholarly community challenging design practices produced in and for the global north. And Rissam asks us to examine the dynamics of culture and power inherent in the resources we build and argues that design needs to be locally situated first. Now, of course, the, the post-colonial perspective is important here, but post-colonial studies itself has sometimes been accused of having an Anglophone bias, and the linguistic perspective is just as important. So DH can draw from these examples in thinking about how we construct resource resources and asking questions like, how can we plan for linguistic diversity here? How should we recognize the, the spe specificities of cultural context in interface design? One area in which DH and, and modern languages come together in interesting ways is in studies of migration in la language communities and cultural memory. So, for example, Saskia Hochhepfer uh, is a researcher whose internet ethnographic work on the London French archiving project, web archiving project, explore, uh, explores digital representations of a language community through its online interactions. And, and she, she, the the project actually produced a special collection in the UK web archive around the London French community, community as a result. Or similarly, um, Naomi Wells, uh, who's pursuing, who some of you may know because she spent some time now in Bologna, who is pursuing web archive approaches to develop new research questions and method methodologies to study technology-driven forms of communication and representation of language communities in the UK. In one workshop with the British Library, uh, Wells invited Latin Americans in the UK to explore how their lives might be remembered in the future through the physical and online collections of the British Library. And the workshop asked, how can we shape archives and collections and use them to discover and tell our own individual and collective histories? So these approaches provide the means to engage with multi multilingual and transnational, transcultural community practices in new ways. Likewise, in the MLA panel in Chicago, which I mentioned earlier this month, Silvia Fernandez described the Borderlands Archive Cartography Project, uh, an archive, and I quote, dedicated to locate, map, and facilitate access to 19th and 20th century U.S.-Mexico Borderlands newspapers, which explores historical cultural transition along the U.S.-Mexico border. This project aims to address a potentially controversial topic by allowing multiple and multilingual perspectives to be shown through an evidence-based community-generated portal. 
Now, digital methods are obviously a very important part of, of DH, and we know digital methods and tools are not culturally neutral, and yet there's little for, I sense there's little formal work in DH to explore how they operate differently in, di in different linguistic and cultural contexts. Digital methods are mostly conceived of to operate monolingually, often with English as the implied default. And in his, in his piece uh, called Digital Diversity as a Technical Problem, Alan Liu refers to work by David Mimo and others and asks what methods we might use to facilitate the comparison, for example, of topic models of English and Spanish corpora rather than analyzing text one language at a time. DH is well placed to take an active role in developing these multilingual and translingual methods and tools. This started to become visible in the, uh, this became, was much more visible in the DH conference in Mexico than, in, than, it, than, is, than is the case normally, but I think there's still a long way to go. Another area in which DH might make an impact uh, is in better understanding how different digital practices influence knowledge creation and circulation in different linguistic and cultural settings. We need more ethnographic research into DH, global DH practices, I would argue, following on from the excellent work of people like Zmiljana Antoniovic. And for the last year, I've personally, sorry, for the last few years, um, as some of you know, you know, I've been engaged in interview study, an interview study on global dynamics in the digital humanities across various languages and geographies, which I hope to uh, publish on in the future. There's been quite a lot of work done on general social implications of digital knowledge circulation as well, more in, more in kind of general in the, in the uh, more in the general uh, digital culture setting. But what interests me is how this affects diversity in the humanities or scholarship more gener generally, and how we can understand better some of the, the, the cultures of what Marin Dacor, for example, calls self-referentiality, ego referencement, uh, and how it can help us to consider cultural imbalances of visibility in scholarly communication. I could go on, I could talk about lots of other things here, we could talk about translation as a research topic, but I want to end by talking briefly about modern languages, multilingualism and pedagogy. As I, as I said earlier, language learning has been long been in the forefront of digital pedagogies, a fact not recognised by, by many, including DH in my view, and journals like uh, the, the journal Language Learning and Technology demonstrate a long tradition in this area, and the Continuous appearance, for example, uh, books like Aprender, Aprender en la Era Digital, Learning to Learn in the Digital Age by Esperanza Román Mendoza, show the level of, uh, the, 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 highlight the, the level of activity in this area, looking with teaching, looking at emerging pedagogies, autonomous and participatory learning, learner agency and identity, which I think are very important and, and would, would give a lot of um, possibilities for greater collaboration between DH and modern languages. But with increasing emphasis on the concept of the international classroom, I think also DH and modern languages have opportunities to collaborate and develop new strategies for transcultural and translingual learning using uh, our, our, stu our student cohorts, both facilitating more, more inclusive pedagogies and giving greater linguistic and cultural scope to the materials that we study. Researchers in my institution have defined the international classroom in terms of a number of uh, steps, which I won't go through in, uh, in, in great detail, but they, they include interna internationalizing the curriculum, promoting greater intercultural awareness, Recognizing the importance of language learning as part of in, in, introducing language components to digital humanities uh, programs if they don't exist already. But also, and one idea which has interested me, and I hope to actually uh, realize this very soon, is to look at cross-program collaboration internationally. I think I have heard of some experiences of, of shared virtual collaborations between different student cohorts on different MA and BA programs, but there's, there's not a lot of, I haven't heard a, a lot of evidence of that. That's something which interests me very much at the moment. How to engineer a situation where respecting the national differences, curricular differences and so on, you can set up a, a meaningful engagement between different student cohorts. So that's one way in which we can engineer greater, a greater sense of inter international classroom, but another option lies closer to home. That's the students themselves, our students themselves. In MADH, I admit, in, in our MA program, I admit we are, we, are, we are unusual in having such a high proportion of students. We have a very high number of students from East Asia, China specifically. Um, 
but I feel sometimes we ourselves don't use our own the 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 the, the strengths, the experience of our own students enough to to reflect on, to bring bring out the, their own traditions. Um, and another missed opportunity is in terms of the concept of heritage or community languages. So this isn't the student body itself, but the community within which the students are living in, in our own cities. And it's interesting that modern language, the report that I've mentioned earlier on, consistently mention this as a missed opportunity in general for, for modern languages that we have, for example, in the UK, and I'm sure, I'm sure here it's, it, 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 there, there are some similar experiences, we have, we have en enormous richness in languages in places like London, but there's no connection between the language community, very little connection between the language communities and the modern language department, well, the modern language learning experience at university and at school. So why don't we, in a, modern, in a digital humanities program, for example, try and tap into that language community, those language communities that we have all around us in, in developing um, developing interesting pedagogical experiences. Kathy Davidson mentions in, in her book, New Education, in the US, um, uh, highlights in the US uh, this contradiction, the fact that we have, um, for the for elites, for social elites, language acquisition carries esteem, whereas for immigrants, the, uh, their own languages, their original lang languages often carry stigma. Um, and she gives the example of Joshua Belknap, who's created a, a, a translingual learning model which aims to kind of break down this contradiction. So what I've described so far is a loose array of research and teaching practices and projects with a modern languages or multilingual component. But how can modern languages gain greater traction within the digital humanities and move beyond sympathetic nods and token gestures? Well, there have been various attempts to explore digital humanities cultural studies according to linguistic tradition in I, I did mention the digital. His, I mentioned already mentioned the digital Hispanisms uh, workshops in in, in, in the UK and in the MLA. So far, these initiatives have really simply aimed to map emerging emerging research initiatives connected to modern languages. Um, so the question then is, well, where do we go from here? A little bit like um, the, the, the definitional problems about digital humanities. It are, you know, are terms like digital Hispanism meaningful beyond the, the, the label of a particular panel? Are they, is digital modern languages a thing? Does it actually represent anything? I'm not going to answer that question here, I'm afraid, but uh, what it, we are starting to see is an emerging community practice around digital modern languages which may help to answer those questions. And looking at those examples, I would suggest that some of the kinds of things which such a field might represent might be things like multilingual and translingual di digital methods, online transcultural exchange, digitally mediated negotiation of cultural memory, and linguistic and cultural translation. So in conclusion, I've argued for a more genu genuinely bi-directional relationship between digital humanities and modern languages. And the project I'm involved in is studying both digital mediations of modern languages research and modern language perspectives on digital studies. Just to finish off by mentioning some of our plans, as I, as I mentioned, a report is coming out very soon, probably early next week, probably Monday or Tuesday, the first of a, a number of landscaping exercises we've done. And the next stage of our project will focus more on practical and experimental engagements between DH and modern languages. This may interest the people in this room more as we continue to explore what more actively modern language inflected digital research agendas might look like and how DH might play a part in this. So if anybody's interested in that, please contact me. I'd be really like to hear things from an Italian perspective. And one of the things we want to do is to appraise the extent to which digital data as a complex cultural product in its own right represents a meaningful record accessible to modern languages, research and pedagogies. We have organized on this project and will continue to organize workshops exploring digital methods in modern foreign languages. And we're about to launch an event to create tutorials demonstrating the critical use of digital tools and methods for teachers, learners, and researchers interested in modern languages and cultures. An announcement about that will go out very soon as well, which will be published as an edited collection of, of educational resources. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Svens, for this inspiring uh, talk. And I'm sure that there are a lot of questions uh, from the audience.
I have a sort of problem with the definition of modern language. It's, that is the very, I mean, foundation of your discourse. Because in a sense, um, um, uh, modern language is something that is not in your own country language. So what is modern language? Uh, what is uh, uh, English studies, for instance, in Italy? Is your, I mean, in your country, is just literature, yeah. literary studies. So, do you uh, can you, I mean, define uh, somehow uh, if modern languages in this exist really, or are simply the fact that, for historical reason, we are used to study our own language and literature in our own language more than other literatures. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't have a good answer, um, but I'll try. <laughs> So, I mean, there's, there's a certain irony here, isn't there? Because it's difficult to define modern languages in the same way it's difficult to define digital humanities. So there, there are some similarities between modern languages and digital humanities, which I didn't mention. There are some institutional similarities in terms of fragility or, or disciplinarity and, and where, where they sit, which I, I won't dwell on because that's not answering your question. But modern languages as a term in the US doesn't mean just modern foreign languages, at least as my understanding. As you can see, the Modern Languages Association is actually more about English than about foreign languages, although they do have foreign languages there. So I, I, that's one reason why I keep, I keep changing I kept changing in the talk between modern languages and modern foreign languages. I do mean modern foreign languages. In Britain, modern languages means uh, foreign languages. Sadly, it usually means just European languages because um, it was a sort of reaction to the classic, you know, originally it was born out of the, the classics. Um, and so they, you know, then French and German, Italian, Spanish and so on became important. So as a result, we have a great problem. In our study, we had one problem we had was in attracting in, uh, interest from people involved in Chinese and Arabic and, and, and in minor or endangered or small languages. And the, in the study we're about to, uh, to, to publish, there is a bias towards the European languages, uh, which in the, Europe, in the interview study we will publish on in a few more months, uh, we've managed to balance, we've managed to fight, we, because we could be proactive there, we could change that. So in the, it would be true to say, as you said, that there is a literary studies bias towards modern languages. Um, however, that's contested, strongly contested at the moment, and the moves towards trans, you know, transcultural approaches, for example, uh, have really changed uh, changed things. There's also there are, there are also very important parts of modern languages which definitely don't see themselves identified within the, the textual or literary tradition, uh, and there is debate about that. Um, so I think it'd be wrong to say it's just that. It involves lots of other things. Um, there's also a difference in the UK between our traditional universities and the new universities. And the new universities, which don't have so much esteem, actually, uh, you know, historically, and I'm not saying that's right, but that's, that's the way the things have worked, actually have been a lot more innovative and have been a lot less text-based, or, or narrowly text-based. They've been much more innovative pedagogically, and they've been much more innovative in terms of looking at different re uh, research materials than the, tra the traditional universities in general. Yes. I have a question myself, actually, sure. and it's on applications, because you mentioned some applications that will come up uh, in uh, a few weeks or mm -hmm. even months. And I was wondering if you have already tested uh, these methods, uh, uh, multilingual models in DH, um, not at the university, as you mentioned before, but uh, uh, at high school, for example, in other, outside the university, at high school or even primary school or perhaps preschool. So the, thank you. So the project is not, you know, I've, I had my years of creating digital resources. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm very happy to take a, a sabbatical from that. Yeah. So the, the, the project is not about creating digital resources. It's, uh, the project is more about landscaping, around bringing people together. So we're, we're aiming to bring people together who are doing these things. And the, the engagements we're going to create will hopefully involve researchers, teachers, uh, teachers yeah. at uni uh, lecture, sorry, le uh, lecturers at university, teachers at schools, okay. students themselves, digital practitioners, commercial companies involved in, in language, digital languages in some way, the general public, there'll be much more broader engagements. But okay. we're, not, we're not building anything ourselves. I'm very, I'm very grateful okay. <laughs> to not be building anything for a while. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. A second round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you.